Next, I'm pleased to invite Ms. Claire Akemanzi, CEO of Rwanda Development Board, to give her remarks. Ms. Claire, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone. I want to start by very much thanking the Singapore Business Federation for organizing uh, this call uh, today. I also want to thank the partnership with Private Sector Federation, the High Commission of Rwanda, Enterprise Singapore for making this very worthwhile organization this morning. In many ways, Rwanda is described to many people as the Singapore of Africa. Some even go to call the Rwanda Development Board the EDB of Africa. While many have reasons for connecting Rwanda and Singapore, I believe that the affiliation that many see between our two countries is because we share a lot in common. First of all, as two countries, we have very close political relationships between our two countries. Both the Prime Minister of Singapore and the President of Rwanda have exchanged in many occasions different ways of strengthening our bilateral cooperation. But also on a business and economic angle, the Rwanda Development Board was very much inspired among many by the EDB of Singapore. And so when people call Rwanda, the Singapore of Africa and RDB, the EDB of Africa, I believe it's just testament of the many inspirations we draw from each other. But let me also just say uh, very specifically that the government of Rwanda, just like Singapore, very much prioritize economic development and improvement of the standards of, its, of, of living of its people as a number one top priority. We are committed to the private sector growth. We are committed to accelerating economic growth and poverty reduction. We are committed to an excellent business environment that makes private sector of Rwanda and those who do business in Rwanda very competitive. And for many who visit Rwanda and go through our streets, they say that when they look at the cleanliness of our city and of our country, it reminds them of Singapore. And when it comes to governance, when it comes to cleanliness of our governance, including the zero tolerance on corruption, many again see a connection and alignment and inspiration from Singapore. And so when we look back at the results that the government of Rwanda has been able to deliver for its people coming from an extremely low base, we're very inspired that perhaps when people align or see Rwanda and see an affiliation with Singapore, maybe they have some reason to do that. Let me share very quickly some of the results that our country and our government has been able to register for its people over the last years, especially since 1994, when the genocide against Tutsis happened and when this country got new leadership, new direction, and new inspiration. First of all, if you look at economic growth, and my colleague from the Private Sector Federation did talk about that, our economic growth has been at an average of seven to 8% over the last decade. Just last year, most of the quarters of 2019, Rwanda grew at double digits. If you look at poverty, the Human Development Index of the UN looked at Rwanda's uh, poverty reduction statistics and said, concluding that Rwanda is the country that had improved the most in the world over the 25 years since 1994 in improving the human development conditions of its people. Let's talk about the business environment. And again, this was touched on earlier a little bit. Rwanda today is ranked the second easiest place to do business in Africa, only after Mauritius. Rwanda over the last two years has ranked by the World Bank between 29th and 38th easiest place to do business in the world. If you look at the countries that rank among the top 50 in the world, including Singapore that for a very long time has occupied the first position, Rwanda is the only country that ranks among the top 50 in the world and is still a low income country. I think that is testament to Rwanda's ambitions and wanting to, to punch above its weight. And maybe I will end on a very personal note as well, that today the Rwanda, according to the World Economic Forum, continues to rank among the top five when it comes to gender parity. The women in Rwanda have been given an opportunity to participate in politics, in business, in economics, and they have equal opportunities as their brothers in the country. Gender parity is a dividend for us in our country. And so let me end by talking a little bit about investment opportunities in our country. I do have a colleague who is the head of investment promotion on the call, Mr. Philip Lucky, who will be speaking in more detail. 
But let me just summarize that if you're looking at doing business in Rwanda, we welcome you in three uh, broad categories. Number one, we have a problem called Visit Rwanda. Number two, Made in Rwanda. Number three, Start in Rwanda. Let me talk a little bit about each of those, starting with Visit Rwanda. You may have seen that Rwanda has advertised Visit Rwanda on the sleeves of the Arsenal Football Club in the Premier League. But you may have also seen that in PSG in France, Rwanda also advertises its Visit Rwanda brand. The reason for this is that Rwanda has prioritized attracting tourism and brand positioning of Rwanda globally as a key priority. And so attracting hotels, attracting tourism facilities, leisure facilities, and positioning Rwanda as a conference and event hub for Africa is our priority. It is no wonder that over the last five years, with all the improvements and infrastructure we put in place, Rwanda is ranked the third country that has received the most conferences and events in Africa. Let me talk a little bit now about Made in Rwanda, our second broad category. Made in Rwanda is our category that prioritizes manufacturing and production of goods and services in Rwanda. This is a program that we have launched over the last few years, and we've seen tremendous results, both from VW assembling their car in Rwanda, Marathons assembling smartphones in Rwanda, production of garments and textiles for exports, processing of agricultural produce, among many other ways that we are making and doing things in Rwanda, including innovating solutions that are addressing very big problems on the continent like delivering of blood through drones, Irembo, which is providing an online platform to provide all civil services to Rwandans, and many other solutions and innovations that are made in Rwanda or nurtured in Rwanda and then uh, excelled to the rest of Africa. Now, let me talk about the last program. I talked about Visit Rwanda. I talked about Made in Rwanda. And now let me finish with Start in Rwanda. Again, Rwanda is positioned as the country that businesses can come to, start their businesses here, develop their products here, and then once they're successful in Rwanda, scale to the rest of Africa. That is already happening in many ways. I talked about uh, proof of concept. Rwanda is very much positioning itself as a country where you can bring your concept, prove it in Rwanda. We help you with all the conditions you need. We take risk with you if we have to. A good example is the drones in Rwanda, the commercial drones, that was a company that was prototyping in Silicon Valley in the US, but because there were no commercial regulations for drones, they were not able to scale it. We gave them a home in Rwanda. We risked with them providing regulations for drones, and they were able to successfully deliver blood uh, to hospitals in Rwanda, and now they're doing that in Ghana and other parts of Africa. But it's not just proof of concept. It's the Kigali International Financial Center that we are developing in Rwanda. It's also the Kigali Innovation City that we're promoting innovation in Rwanda. So broadly, visiting Rwanda, made in Rwanda, start in Rwanda, are programs that we're investing infrastructure, investing resources, investing skills to be able to deliver not just for Rwandans, but businesses that do start in Rwanda. Now, let me just also say that uh, I know that Singapore is not new to our business environment. We already have a number of business people that are doing business in Rwanda from Singapore. From agriculture, we have a honey processing company from Singapore in Rwanda. We have Peel that is processing poultry in agriculture. But also in innovation, we have companies like Yego Innovation. We have REM that is producing electric motorbikes and prototyping them specifically for the landscape in Africa and in Rwanda in order to scale up once they're successful in Rwanda. We also have Portec in transport and logistics that are also doing business in Rwanda. And of course, we're very much looking forward to having our coffee and tea sell on Red Mart, and hopefully Singaporeans can also enjoy our coffee and tea all the way from Rwanda. And I know that today as we speak is not uh, the best, uh, best time to talk about doing business and traveling because of COVID-19. But let me say that you may have seen in the news that Rwanda has been named by the International Civil Aviation Organization as one of the few countries that have fully complied with all the safety requirements for travel and as a result, we open our airport, airports to, for international travel from 1st of August. We take safety very seriously, and we're investing a lot of time to make sure that when you come to our country, it's safe, and we pro provide all the protocols that civil aviation, international civil aviation has uh, given us. 
And now, if, if you allow, I want to end by welcoming you to Rwanda at the right time. Talk to us at the Rwanda Development Board. Our job is to answer your questions, to link you to the contacts that you need to link to, and to really be your extension from Singapore here in Rwanda. I believe that uh, we have a lot to work on together, and I welcome you. In Rwanda, we say Murakazaneza. I hope that you come and visit us one of these days. Thank you, and I believe my colleague Philip Lucky will give a detailed presentation from Rwanda. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Claire.